And if the code of the entrepreneur uh, referred to in the book um, Fortresses of a Business Mind is mentioned, then that means that they are very, very, very attached to the business. And the longer the business is, the longer they are attached to it. The most prosperous the business becomes, the more they also become uh, involved, at least into that aspect and that perspective of the business. Now, the problem with that is that um, it is full of risk. The business is full of risk, okay? Uh, Every business, every uh, endeavor, every movement practically, anything and everything that we do involves risk, involves risk. How well do we know the risk which is there? How can we uh, come to complete understanding of what we can actually lose in our business. That's what accountants are for, okay? So if you really want to know, you know, you, the, the bigger the business, the harder it is to keep up with. So the IRS comes after small businesses, you know, doing what some other auditing or checking or whatever. And, you know, we had everything invested in that business. So everything just you know, holding that one business up, it, it's going, or that one, you know, it's going to, it's going to really affect our, our heart. It's going to affect our heart. It's going to affect our ways of uh, thinking from the uh, psychological perspective or from a mental perspective. And that's why it's a starting point. However, it definitely is not a do all or lose all. That's for those of us who are engineers, those of us who are doctors, those of us who are lawyers, those of us who are uh, 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 teachers at at schools, or those of us who are uh, civil servants. It doesn't matter, you know, what our titles, those of us who work in the, you know, in banking industry, insurance, and you know, gas and all, it does not matter. It does not matter how good of a company or product that we uh, build or we turn our goodwill into. The goodwill lasts right here on this earth. Uh, So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave every human being that, every human being that. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gave us for us the ability to make the choice. The ability to make the choice when we became mature, muskallaf, we were supposed to make our choice and remember and accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's taking our oath from us against us. Okay. In other words, the story of Adam, again in the English Heights, the story of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created Adam, he took from his left rib the souls of every human being. And if you say that you believe in Allah, you must believe in all his prophets. You cannot deny Adam. So you have to accept the fact that you came from Adam also. And if you accept the fact that you came from Adam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he was talking to you and you responded. He said, am I not your Lord? That's what he asked us all, every last one of us. And then we all said, yes, indeed you are. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And he also says that I want to make sure that you will you, you will use, you will remember uh, when the day comes that you took this oath. Okay? And so everything will be shown to us on that day. On that day, these, uh, these talents, these businesses that we've built, you know, so well up, So, you know, all the connections, all these things. I mean, I'm not even going to say on that day. I'm going to say at the end of our tenure. 
the end of our tenure here on this earth, all of that becomes practically worthless to us. And we know that for a fact. So uh, fact check, uh, when we leave this earth, uh, none of the businesses, none of the homes that we've bought, none of the uh, worldly obsessions are going to have any type of meaning for us. Um, if it did, I tell you what, we would be able to uh, make a couple of, pay a couple of uh, fees and get people out of dying. But of course, look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it. Those who uh, have uh, so much uh, tests and trials, the worst type, I should say, of tests and trials. When I say tests and trials, I mean duration time. You know, if a poor person, you know, becomes infected with a very, you know, ill disease, a very deadly disease, and they do not have the ability to fight it, they usually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through His mercy, takes them quickly out. But the rich person, the richer the person, the more they can put into it. So they want to live a little longer. But at the end of the day, when it's time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Malakutul Maut, the angel of death, and he takes the soul anyway. So uh, the, uh, the duration has to do with it. People who have more tend to think, even if it's not more uh, in terms of wealth, it's more in terms of strength, they think they can fight, 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 instead of submitting, submitting, submitting prior to this time. Uh, so, what this is saying basically is that this goodwill, yes, take advantage of it uh, because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to you for. However, in taking advantage of it, you have to save some for the akhirah, save some for the hereafter. You have to do the deeds with balance and in boundaries. Uh, the deeds have to be uh, those in according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts which is la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Allah ta'ala will give you the tawfiq give us all tawfiq inshallah and teach us what will benefit us and benefit us from from what he has taught us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will then then give you uh, something in which you could not get then he opens the doors and you keep entering them and going through them, which is pretty good, pretty nice. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And so there's a door that you go through and when you get through that door, uh, you have to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, created you to have the best benefit to be subservient to him. The best benefit to, for us is that we are totally subservient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now we cannot be as loving to Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if we are not encouraging that in which is righteous and we are not discouraging that in which is wrong what I want to make sure that people come to understand and come to realize is that the Qur'an is our passport to the grave, our passport. The Qur'an, when we go to the, the, uh, the terminal, when we try to get to the, to the plane, uh, you know, the, the, that door right there. You know, once it's shut, that's it. Once it's open, that's it. Once it's open, shut. <laughs> no opening. <laughs> okay. So that door, uh, we go through it, and we have to show the Qur'an. We have to show Qur'an. It's not these, uh, these good deeds that we are getting rewarded for on this earth. No, it's not. It's not the good will that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us to as a means of us surviving on this earth. No, it's not. But it is the fact that we take the Qur'an, we take the culture of the Qur'an and we scale it. 
we scale it. Now, uh, Quranic uh, culture says that the the individual, if they are of sound mind and they are mature, they must know how to read the Quran. A must know. It's a must. It's not even, you know, I, I, I go to pray, you know, or I fast in the month of Ramadan, and it's not even that. It's the fact that your prayer is not accepted without the Quran. So at least the Quran, you must learn how to read it. So at least we see in this hadith that reading it is not only uh, well reading the Quran knowing how to recite the Quran is an obligation you must know how to recite and if you know how to recite uh, you are better than thousands of people in your exact vicinity who do not know how to recite and now you become responsible to remind them now you become responsible to remind them and work with them. Now your Quranic practitionership uh, becomes uh, authentic, authenticated or certified. Okay? So you have the certification and you want to get the endorsement. Okay? The certification. Okay, you have the shahada. You said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. And you made the intention to learn the Quran. To learn the Quran for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His reward alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enabled you to learn His loving Quran. Even if it was three surahs or four surahs. Okay, you at least did that. Every time you learn, obviously, three or four more, obviously, you know, this should always be, you know, that. You are responsible for that many people in your vicinity. And now you must uh, remind them. And social media is there. Remind the people, you know, that we need to come together and go through gently, responsibly, maturely, Committedly, professionally, through the Quran, and we need to understand. We need to understand why it was revealed or circumstances surrounding the revelation in which we're going to cover. Rasir. Uh, next is that we learn. Obviously, we learn the tafsir. They always, the tafsir is always going to have some very, very important stories, very, very good stories. And the human being is the same, no matter what. Actually, human being before outlives the human being today. The human being, image-wise, strength-wise, you know, the more uh, we are uh, less active, we become, and, and people were much more active back then than they are today. So, you know, Things are deteriorating for the human being. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given the way which is al-Islam. So the person who uh, has that responsibility and takes on the responsibility of not only teaching others, but also learning more and more to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, according to the best practices of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I mean, now we're talking. And why is it that we're talking? Because of the fact that we only have two type of uh, possibilities for the, you know, all things equal. Uh, both when a person is, you know, in the best, in the most, you know, top, top shape in their lives and they have a successful business, if they would like to, or when they make a decision to start uh, becoming a Quranic practitioner, 
you know, learning how to read, they could do because they already have successful business and they just start to scale back on that and scale more into this. In a few months, they should be up, uh, you know, and, and be able to at least teach uh, someone else, teach someone else or some others. They could conduct a class, particularly if they're highly skilled. Uh, they could do it online um, again. So there's a lot that goes with that. Um, I'm going to end the segment now and we're going to talk more about the Quranic uh, practition as, as, a, uh, as a business, inshallah, for the reward in this life as well as in the hereafter being the true uh, success of the multi-billionaires of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.